Hi, it's Kip K from Make Magazine back with another weekend project. Remote controls, they seem to be everywhere and seem to control everything. I've got one for my TV, for my cable box, for my DVD recorder. I even have one for my video camera here. And they all take two to four batteries each. Well, what we need is a remote control that doesn't use batteries. Today's project does just that. It's the Kinetic Remote Control and you shake it to use it. You can find the Kinetic Remote Control by Dananjay Gadre in Make, Volume 12. For this project, you'll need an acrylic tube, a couple of capacitors, some enameled wire, some diodes, heat shrink tubing, neodymium magnets, and a voltage regulator. And you'll build the circuit on a small piece of circuit board. You'll need to choose a remote control you want to use for this project. I'm using a DirecTV Universal Remote. Now, I'm not going to show the complete build of the circuit, but here is the schematic, and it's also available on the PDF for this project. The way this works is the magnets will go inside the acrylic tube and then go back and forth as it's shaken inside a coil of enameled wire. Now the project calls for 1400 turns of enameled wire around this tube and to do it by hand is going to take quite a long time. So I'm going to try to use my drill here and come up with some kind of a contraption to uh, make these coil windings we need. I found a wood dowel that fit right inside of my enameled wire spool and put that in a vise and using a couple of hose clamps held the enameled wire gently in place. I also found a drill bit that fit perfectly inside my acrylic tube so I put the tube over that and also made a little mark using some black electrical tape on the chuck so I could actually count the number of windings. I held the drill in place and started running it slowly and counting the windings as I went. I thought this might turn into a complete mess, but it actually worked real well. And when I was done, I used some black gaffer's tape to cover my windings and to keep them all in place. I slid heat shrink tubing over the two open ends of my windings and inserted the magnets to see how it all worked. I used a couple of rubber stoppers to hold the magnets in place and added a little hot glue to make sure the uh, magnets wouldn't come flying out as I shook it. Now it's time to dissect my remote control. So I carefully pried it open and removed the circuit board and found a spot for my new circuit to go in right where the batteries were. Back to the bench now to hook up our new circuit to our Faraday generator. The two leads from our generator are soldered in the appropriate spots on the circuit board. A few test shakes, and sure enough, I'm generating over 3 volts to our new circuit. Now the final two wires need to be run from the circuit, and those go to the positive and negative connections on the original remote control's battery holder. After trying to put everything back together, I realized that my circuit was not going to fit in the remote, so I had to add a couple of extensions to the caps and spread them out a little bit. Then everything fit nice and snug inside my remote. The final step is to use some hot glue to secure our new Faraday Kinetic Generator to our remote. Well, our Kinetic Remote Control is done, and granted, this isn't something that you're going to want to do to every single one of your remotes. It's just kind of a fun project. But our kinetic remote control does change our channels and does work good without batteries. So that's how to make yourself a kinetic remote control where you shake it to use it. I'm Kip K. We'll see you next week with another weekend project. <music>